بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما The next thing we'll try to compare uh, between the two versions IQ V1 and IQ V2. So we'll try to see why IQ version 2 is better than IQ version 1 and what are the several advantages we get uh, in the version 2 when you compare with the version 1. So let's see the first one. So the first one is like IQ V2 consumes very less bandwidth and the messages are uh, and they say like a faster process. and mainly it is because the number of messages which are exchanged between the two peers are less in number so if we try to compare this with iq version 1 so in the version 1 we have either 6 or 9 messages depending upon the mode we are using like if you are using uh, aggressive mode probably that's going to be 6 messages and if you are using main mode in the phase 1 it will be 9 messages so there will be around kind of nine messages process but whereas in the i version 2 these all messages will be combined into four messages so which makes uh, your process it much faster and also consumes very less uh, amount of bandwidth so that is one kind of advantage we get with i version 2 so the next thing is like i version 2 probably provides an inbuilt nat transversal traversal uh, feature now this is typically like let's say i'm establishing a vpn between the two sides and we generally configure some vpn with some ips let's say i'm using these tunnel ips now if there is any kind of translation in in here let's say there is a service border which is actually doing the translation because whatever this ip this is a private ip address and it has to go to the internet with a public ip so in that scenarios again your vpn tunnel may may not work because the address gets translated and especially between these two endpoints the traffic is actually encrypted so now you want some kind of uh, behavior to automatically detect this kind of things and that's something called as nat transversal which you can enable uh, on iq v1 as well but again iq v2 have a bil- built in this feature now what this does is, what this uh, allows you to do is like it will allow the traffic to get to that specific destination even when the device don't have a public ip address means even if there is a tra- service border in between actually translating your addresses so that is kind of inbuilt uh, you have in the iq v2 now the another advantage is iq v2 can detect if the vpn tunnel is alive or not now this is a key pillar mechanism because once you establish the tunnel between the two endpoints now there must be some kind of mechanism to check whether the remote peer or the remote uh, peer the vpn is up or not so this tunnel should be will be only up so if there is any problem in the connectivity in the transit network or if there is any problem on the remote side there must be some kind of mechanism just like when you connect a router to the switch if you remove the cable uh, by default there will be keep alive messages sent for every 10 seconds Uh, where based on that it will indicate that this interface is down so there must be some kind of mechanism like that so in case of iq v1 you don't have this feature in build of course you can enable iq v1 with something called dead peer detection configuration which which will allow you to do this manually but whereas in case of iq v2 you have this feature in build which means when when you establish the tunnel between the two endpoints and due to some reason if there is any any kind of issue like on the network or on the remote peer the tunnel will go down and and it will keep uh, and it will ensure that if that particular peer comes up it will allow to reestablish the tunnel automatically okay so that is something uh, you have in the iq v2 now additionally iq v2 supports something called uh, eap authentication process like generally in order to uh, authenticate the remote peer uh, and in order to ensure that the, you are connecting to the right peer we we do have a process of authentication and in ike version 1 we used to have pre shared keys where we can configure some passwords on both the sides and ensure that the password should match on both the sides and also or also we can use something called certificate based authentication like rss signatures Uh, these are the two methods what you have in iq v1 as well 
But additionally, in Ike V2, you have a one new method called EAP, Extensible Authentication Protocol. Now, this method allows you to integrate your existing uh, authentication process, which we use in our LAN, like uh, integrating your Active Directory or the network access with the, with the help of some Cisco Eyes uh, software, like using some external authentication process, which we use for our LAN users. The same authentication method you can integrate for the remote users as well. So this is something added in the Ike version two. Now the next thing is like it supports asymmetric authentication method. Now asymmetric authentication means like if you compare this with Ike V1, let's say if I'm using pre-shared keys, so I'll be using pre-shared key on this side. Let's say I'm using Cisco 123. So I have to use the same authentication method on the opposite side, which means I must use again the pre-shared key and also the key should match. So if I try to go with pre-shared key on one side, let's say I'm using pre-shared key on one side and I want to use some kind of certificates on the other side, this is not going to work with version one. We call that as symmetric authentication. But whereas in Ike V2, we can use asymmetric, which means I can use a pre-shared key authentication on one side and I can use certificates on the other side. That, that, should, that will work. Uh, or you can, and also you can use different keys or I can use something called pre-shared key on this set as well as pre-shared key on the other side, but different keys. Like here I'm using Cisco 123 and here I'm using NYA 123, let's say. So every peer keys are different. So when you configure, you can have different keys for different neighbors. This means no need to match on both the sides. So we call this as uh, asymmetric authentication. So we can use different pre-shared keys. And also one side you can use pre-shared key, other side you can use uh, PKI, public key infrastructure. But whereas you come, if you compare this version one, it only supports symmetric, means both the sides must be same authentication method and also the same key and the same mode of method of authentication. Means both the sides, it should be the same uh, PKI or same pre-shared keys in the previous version. Now the next thing is like, uh, Ike V2 supports something called um, Ike V2 Mobility and Multi Homing Protocol. That's what it stands for. Mobike, that's what Ike V2 Mobility and Multi Homing Protocol. Now, this feature allows the protocol uh, to, the resist, to resist the network changes. Now, network changes are like, let's say I'm using my Wi Fi network. Normally, what you do is you use a Wi-Fi network and you're moving your Wi-Fi network to maybe you're moving to 4G network, let's say. Maybe the Wi-Fi is down, you move to a different network. And when you're moving to a different network, automatically the IP may change because you are disconnecting from one network and you're moving onto the another network. So in that scenario, let's say if this device is already established a VPN connection, so the VPN connection normally will go down and you have to re-establish a new connection that is a normal scenario in the previous version. But whereas in the Ike V2, it's not like that. So even though you are moving your device, let's say I'm moving my device from Wi-Fi network to 4G network, still it will ensure that the connection will not drop. So the VPN connection still will be up. You don't need to reconnect. Uh, that's what we call as this feature, instant reconnection to the network, even when the network IP or the network uh, changes, especially when you're when you're connecting to a wireless network, these things uh, are common. Now, IQ2 encryption supports more stronger algorithms when you compare with the previous version. Still, it is faster, even though it is using stronger algorithms. So basically, IQ2 supports uh, powerful encryption ciphers, uh, which has more improved, overall improved security, and also it overcomes most of the security flaws what we used to have in the previous version. And additionally, Ike V2 supports something called perfect forward secrecy. Now, what this exactly mean is, uh, generally, if you compare, whenever you, you're trying to establish a tunnel between the two endpoints, we generally know the process. It goes through something called phase one. In the phase one, it will negotiate the tunnel parameters, and it is going to build the secure channel. 
So while negotiating that, it will decide the diffusion new algorithm, you know, the encryption algorithms, and then the hashing algorithms. And then if I'm using a pre-shared key, what is a pre-shared key? These all parameters will be derived. And these keys are, de uh, are derived based on the diffusion new algorithms. And when you come back to the phase two, in the phase two, you actually apply the IPsec, where you secure the traffic, where you actually encrypt your packet across the tunnel. Now, while you're doing that, it will ensure that you're not using the same keys. So in order to again apply the IPsec, again, it has to use uh, some kind of keys, which, you have, which are again used for encryption and hashing algorithms. So normally in the, in the, in the version one, it will, whatever the keys which are derived here, the same keys will be used here. So this PFS feature, the perfect forward uh, secrecy feature is kind of optional feature. Now what this will do is, it will force the defi uh, algorithm, which are used in the phase one. Uh, again, the same, it will, it will enforce that the same keys are not used in the, in the phase two means at the time of phase two calculation, uh, it's going to set up, uh, it's going to ensure that the same keys are not uh, are used again. So it ensures that the same key, which are used in the phase one, they are not again used in the phase two. So it's like a reeking mechanism, which will ensure that the same keys are not repeated what was used in the phase one option. Now, IQ2 protocol uses encryption keys for both the sites, making sure that it is more secure than the previous one. So the encryption keys will be used or applied on both the sites. Now, one more difference is in IQ2, we have the facility to negotiate multiple set of uh, selectors. Now, what this means is when we, when we go to this particular peer and what we do is we configure what is our interesting traffic. So interesting traffic is nothing but what traffic you want to protect. So we write some ACL statements and then we say that, okay, I want to match this specific source IP range. And then I want to match this particular destination IP range. And then we write a specific port and a specific uh, destination port as well. Now these are the specific parameters you, you are going to define. And we have to uh, have that exact agreement of the traffic on both the sites uh, between the peer, whatever is requested. But whereas in Ike V2, we can use multiple combinations of this. So we can not only define the source IP, we can define some specific ranges and also the destination IP ranges. The, these are all ranges. We can define the specific ranges, multiple combinations or allowed. And the particular peer have an option to uh, to decide within that range. So again, it has an option to choose the subset of the selectors when both the sites are not configured with each other. In case if it is not configured, then it will choose the subset of the of this specific selector address, selector the ranges, uh, what traffic should be secured. So this is one additional option what we have. And IQ2 offers uh, reliability. Again, it offers a better reliability compared with the previous version with a more improved sequence number and more improved acknowledgement messages. So these are some of the enhancements what I have discussed here. So which, which makes IQ2 a much better uh, version when you compare with the previous IQ1 version.